Okay, this is a continuation of the R functions talk, and let's look at scoping. So what is scoping? So when you use the less than minus sign, you are assigning to the local variable. If you double less than minus, you are assigning to the global variable. Let's look at example. In x equal to 10, and then you have a function g, and then g adds 1 to x, and it prints x. In this case, every time the, the global variable x is red, and the local variable x is modified, so it prints 11 twice. So g equal equal to g is true. In the global case, x is 11, and then you add 1 to it, it prints 12. Then you call this h, then you call h twice. The second time it comes here, the 12 becomes 13. The 12 is not equal to 13, so it prints false. So make sure that uh, you understand that this is a uh, lexical scoping, not dynamic scoping. So let's look at an example to clarify what we mean by lexical scoping. Suppose we have a equal to 10. Then we have a function f, which refers to the global variable a, returns a into x. And then, then we have a function g, which takes which change, changes the value of a to 2. Then it calls fx. So the question is, when g calls f, which f a does g f c? In case of dynamic, it will see this value. In, in case of lexical, it will see the one above it. Then we call g2. So let's look at g2. g2, x equal to 2. And then it goes to f2. f2 would be a 2 into a. And a in this case would be 10. So it prints 20. N not uh, this 2, 2 into 2, 4. In dynamic, it will be printed this 2. At the runtime, this is on the stack, in the color stack of f. G is on this. First, G is on the stack, then f is on the stack, and 8 equal to 2 is on the stack. But f doesn't see that. f sees only the what's in the, the, in the static scoping, defined in the, in the code, not the way you call it. Let's look at another example. A, a function f just returns x, and x is a global variable, x equal to 1. And in this case, g uh, is a function that changes x equal to 0 and then calls f. Now the question is, which f does it see? Does x equal to 0 or x equal to 1? So when you call g, you can say you see 1 because f sees x equal to 1. And f is not dynamic. In dynamic scoping, f would have seen the 0. Okay, so that's clear. So let's look at example. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 3. And the same example like before, what is the output of? g g2 2 and since we know that this lexical scoping these guys will be ignored f2 f2 would be 2 2 into 1 plus 3 so that is 5 and this values are not used this values are used in the lexical scope so let's look at example of closure next what is a closure 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 of captures the values so suppose you have a function f and this is the scope and then in this scope there's another function which returns a now which a is referring to so since this is a scope a in this case refers to the a of this function in this outer scope and it will whatever a happens to be at this point will be the a at this point not the global a if there's another a out here that doesn't matter so let's look at example values used in f are captured at function creation time if the value changes, f is not affected because suppose a is equal to, we create a function g with f a equal to 7. g is actually a function, f returns a function with a equal to 7, 7. So a is 7, so it's a function that returns 7. So now we change the value of a to 10. But the, the function inside the scope is not changed. So if you call g, you still get 7. That's the idea of closure. So what's the use of closure? You can make static variables and static counters, which ha which each each counter has its own copy of a of a of a variable. So let's look at example. Make counter. Make counter is a function that returns another function, which is a counter. Inside the function, you keep a static variable k equal to zero, and then what the function the count uh, the incrementer what it does is a function with nameless function is incremented last our last value in the function is a counter so it will it will add k equal to k plus 1 basically this k will get add uh, 1 to it this k and then return the value of k and this is 
assign it global but not global in the parent environment so in the parent environment this key gets modified so let's look at example what happens when you use it so you make counter c1 make counter c2 now you're calling it twice so each time each c1 and c2 gets a copy of this k which are different when you call c1 it prints 1 c1 you call it again it gets 2 c1 c2 you call it prints 1 c2 you call 2 so you have two independent counters running that's a use of a closure closure captures the value at the creation time so let's look at another example what is the output of this code you have k equal to 1 inside it you have a, you have a function s which is a closure of a, it runs another function with another k inside it and in this case k starts at 2 and you do k equal to k plus 1 and return k so you have two counters which start at 2 c1 you assign to s and you call s twice c2 at s then you call c1 c2 C1, C1, C2, C2, and at this point you assign C1 to S. So the old values, old object in C1 is lost. Then again C1 starts from 2. Then again you call C2, which is still continuing from here. So let's look at the output. So th uh, this key is not used at all. First of all, this K1, this is closure, static variable, uh, local to the function S. So you get C1 K equal to 2, K equal to 2. Then you get 3, 4, 3, 4. You get 3 uh, 2 then 3 and at this point c2 is a 4 so it becomes 5 so that's an example of a closure so what does this print this exercise for you guys x equal to 1 is a function that returns x it will return 1 x equal to 2 it's a global variable now what is the value of e is it this x or this well x since this is there's no closure out here the, the value of x is change and suppose you change the global x in this case to 3 but they're they already all in the global environment so it will the same x is actually changed to 3 and you call e again it should actually print 3 because the global x is change then you change to 4 again you call it, it should print 4 so e, assigning to the global variable there's an answer you print 2 3 and 4. Let's look at one more exercise. This is the same thing with closure. In this case, a equal to 100, b equal to 200. And return a function ax plus b, where x is a value that you supply out here. First, you create a function g with 20 and 10. So it is 20x plus 10. g is a function uh, 20x plus 10. Then you call it with a 2. So it will be 2 into 20 plus 10. Second times you call it f. f was created uh, out here with the, the default argument 100 and 200. 100 into 2 plus 200. So 100 into 2 plus 200. This is the value out here. In this case, this is a function x to 20x plus 10, 20 to 2 plus 10. So another exercise would be a longer one. In this case, it is an anonymous function. And if you're more interested in like hundreds of exercises, you can download as PDF and try them. This is the output. You can look at it, How which one's updated. So for a quiz, what is the output of cat? And with a cat equal to cat, explain anonymous function, explain closure example. And the, out the output of first one is cat. Anonymous functions you already know is a nameless function. Closure you know example uh, the counter make counter. So references are basically this Google online for our documents, Stack Overflow for static closure everything, and there's a R book by Venables R introduction to R, and Verzani has a book called Simple R. They are available online and Matloff has Art of R the book. And most of the material in this lecture is taken from Hands On R by Grolemand. Okay, and then most stuff you need, you can find in Advanced R, this website, and closures, R language reference, and data types on Wikibooks. Just Google around and you'll find it. Thank you.